In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert your MIDI files to audio clips the right way. Now, although there isn't any wrong way to approach this, it all depends on why you are doing the conversion in the first place. There are a couple of reasons why you might want to convert your MIDI files to audio clips, but one major reason is to reduce the CPU load on your system by avoiding major synthesizers. And this is a great way to improve performance, most especially when you're working on complex projects. So let's dive in and explore the best way to convert MIDI files to audio clips in FL Studio. So first of all, let's have a listen to what we are going to be working with. So the very first step to going about converting MIDI files to audio clip is to first of all highlight exactly where you want to convert. So in this case, this is exactly what we are going to be working with. As you can see, I've gone ahead to go and highlight this portion. And the way I mostly do it is that I just convert a single pattern like this pattern right here, I just convert this to an audio clip and then I use this like a pattern. So when I'm done, I go ahead and duplicate this a couple of times. The next thing we're going to do is isolate the track. Then you right click right here consolidate track and then we click on time selection so the next thing you want to do from here is to select wrap remainder and the reason why you want it to be wrap remainder because you know most of the time when we play synth or play sounds there's always this sound that you know comes out even when the media stops playing so what this wrap remainder does is that it takes that part that comes after and then brings it to the beginning of the track so there's this kind of like a perfect loop where you don't get any breaks or pops or clicks or whatever in between the tracks and then also turn off enable insert effect and turn off enable master effect and now you might probably think that the next step is to press start and then we are done uh well that is going to be a mistake not necessarily like the huge mistake like i said earlier it kind of depends on the scenario where you are using this audio track for for example let's say you're converting a midi to audio and you just want to use that audio for like for samples well then the sky is your limit. You can do whatever you want to do. But in a scenario where you still want to have like mixer controls, you still want to control the fader, have the effects and everything, just turning off the insert effect alone is not going to cut it. Let me explain. Walk with me. First of all, we have a MIDI file and this MIDI file goes through the synth and from the synth, it goes to an insert in the mixer. And right there in the mixer, we have effects that we can, you know, add to the sound. But now you notice that even if we turn off the insert effect, you still have some mixer functions that affect the sound aside from the effects, like the volume fader, the pan knob, the stereo separation, and so on. So in this case, if you want to have full 100% control over the sound that is being converted from MIDI to audio, it is best you entirely disconnect this track from the mixer, convert it, and then connect it back to the mixer. So it's actually very, very simple to achieve this. So let's go ahead and close this out. So first of all, all we need to do is just find out um, which insert on the mixer this is on and then we'll just go to our channel rack here as you can see it's an insert 14 right here so i'm going to go ahead and take this down to zero so all i'm going to do right here is right click that's the same thing time selection everything remains the same wrap remainder and then i click on start all right and then as you can see we have this right here now if we have to play this it's sounding very, very different from what we had earlier. And that is because it is not connected to the mixer. So all we just need to do is just take this track up all the way back to 14 and then we are good. Now, the way I do this, like I said earlier, is I just take this file and then I just use it as a pattern and then just go ahead and paste it wherever is necessary. And then you can always go ahead and mute the initial pattern. And it's always a good idea to retain this particular MIDI file and not to just delete it and discard it. Because let's say, for example, you want to, you know, change the key of the track. Instead of changing the audio file itself, it is best to transpose from the MIDI file and then convert it back to audio. That's just the best process. For example, let's say I want to reduce this by five semitones. Okay, five semitones take it down and then stretch this out okay we have this it's not sounding that bad but now comparing this to the original file if i take this down five semitones or five and we have this
comparing that to the initial audio file. So you can see it is totally washed out. It has lost some quality. It has lost some, you know, it's just very, very different and it is not good. So just always try to keep the main MIDI file because it is still necessary and it is still very, very useful. So you can just go ahead and just dock this out. If you don't know how to do this, well, you can just, you know, right click here and then you see group with above track. So once you click on that, it does create this arrow where you can just dock it down for you. So, so far, if you have been watching my videos and you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Thank you. All right. So we've gotten how to convert MIDI files to audio clips. What if we want to convert audio clips back to MIDI? <laughs> well, it's not that difficult and it's actually very, very simple and straightforward. So just click on this video right now shown on your screen to get that information. Thanks guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.